Hello everyone, David A. Cox here with PCClassesOnline.com, and today I'm going to be teaching all of you how to use this really wonderful app, I think you're going to love it, called Alfred. Now the reason why I'm teaching this class today is because during one of our recent live classes, which are of course completely free, open to the public, a woman at the very end of the class chimed in and said, I would really love to learn how to use this particular app. And I had never really heard of it, so I started doing some research. I actually looked at other YouTube tutorials on how to use it, and I didn't find that many of them explained it very well. So once I finally got it and played with it and eventually bought the paid version, I thought, you know what, let's teach the normal human being out there how to use this app and how it can benefit their lives. So the way I look at Alfred is that it's going to benefit particularly three different types of people. Business individuals who have a lot of things to get done and just need to get them done faster and more efficiently. People with severe ADHD, which technically speaking I fit into. And also, I think this is actually a really wonderful app for seniors, for someone who can't really remember where this or that is. And if Alfred is set up by someone else, I think could be a really wonderful tool for that particular type of person. So let's dive into it. The first thing, of course, I want to show you is how to get it. And the way you're going to get it is by going to this particular website, which is alfredapp.com. Now, the bulk of the app itself is free. You just click right here to download it. It's very, very lightweight, very simple. Now, some of the advanced features you can only get by purchasing what they call a power pack. And it is 17 pounds. This is made in the UK. For those of you in the United States, that translates to approximately $28. So let's go into the app so I can sort of start to show you how it really works. The first thing you're going to do when you launch Alfred for the first time is you need to tell it, how are you going to start this app in general? Because this program always is running on your computer in the background. And don't worry, it's not going to really slow anything else down. So here under the general tab, of course, you want this first option checked so that it is, in fact, always running. And you can tell the computer, what hotkey are you going to define to start using Alfred. In my case, I decided to have it when I double tap my shift key, that's what that symbol stands for, it's going to launch Alfred. And that right there that you saw that just appeared on my screen, that is what Alfred looks like. Let's get out of it. Um, but you can do whatever combination you want. And if you want to change it, it's as easy as clicking inside that box. You'll notice that there's now a blue outline and you can hit whatever you want. So let's say I want it to launch when I hit control and the letter Z. That's what it becomes. That little character there stands for control. Let's change it back. So now it's once again on double tap. It is a good idea, especially if you don't live in the United States, to tell this app where you live. The reason being, if you tell it to search for something, do you want it to use the .com, which is America? If you live in Canada, do you want to use .ca? So that's a good idea to just tell it where exactly you are. Now what we're going to do is go into the Features tab, and I'm going to start showing you some of the functions that this app can fulfill. Please understand, this is actually incredibly advanced and complex software. So I'm really going to try to bring this down to the average consumer level and show you how this will benefit many of your lives. Of course, you want it to really be able to search for pretty much everything in your computer. Most of you won't need or care for it to search for Apple scripts. If you don't use Safari, there's no reason to have it search for bookmarks. Okay. You can also tell it where locally in your computer do you want it to look for items. So let's say you want it to ignore maybe your downloads folder. You could remove that from this list. But you can really tell it anywhere in your computer to search. Now for some of you out there who are maybe a little bit more advanced, one of the things you're probably familiar with is that when you use Spotlight on the Mac to search, it does not look at the library files. Thanks to Alfred, you can have that be included. I just personally haven't done that. Next, we're going to go here into File Search. So this is where you're telling Alfred what are going to be the commands that you're going to give it 
to open a file. So for example, right here, it says that when I type in the word open into Alfred, let me do that real quick. I even just hit the letters OP and it already figures out what I'm telling it to do. So now I can hit the return key and it knows I'm telling it open file and then I just type in the name of that file. You only really need to get the first couple letters because it's instantly searching for everything and it is very, very fast. Um, also you can have it search inside files. I don't think many of you are going to really be needing that. Let's go into some of the other tabs here. Oh, by the way, don't show. You can have these items here. Okay, so when you're telling it to open, you may or may not want it to ignore your bookmark history. Okay, you can kind of really tweak that however you want. Let's go into web search. Now, this is one of the best features of Alfred. Um, I'll show you an example of how I use this particular app. Many times when I'm creating our little tutorial videos, I have to create that image that you all see when you first see the video. Um, and so for that, I usually pull my images from Google Images. Now without Alfred, my process for getting these is I'd have to open my web browser, which in my case is Chrome, go to Google, then go to Google Images, and then type in the name of whatever it is I'm searching for. By using this keyword images, all I have to do is type in I am, it immediately syncs up, okay, David's telling me I'm going to search for images, type in the name of my image, so let's say I'm looking for puppies, hit the enter key, and boom, it launches my web browser, and we have puppies. You can now all ooh and ah. You can see many, many other features here that which we can all use. For example, if you happen to use Gmail, you can just literally type in the word Gmail into Alfred and boom, it goes straight to your inbox. Very, very fast. Other items here, you'll find you can search for Amazon items. You can search on Bing or Yahoo. Uh, this one is really handy. You can search for YouTube videos instantly just by going into Alfred, typing in Y-O-U, I didn't even really probably need to hit the U. There you go. It's right there. And so then I just type in, again, what am I looking for? Let's say I'm looking for Pilates classes, which I probably just slaughtered the spelling of. Yep, I did. But there you go. I now have Pilates classes. Woohoo! All right. Other things you can do here Wolfram Alpha, another handy function. You can search. Facebook. I'm going to give you another trick about Facebook at the very end of this video. Another handy one right here is weather. It uses the weather underground. You may be familiar with that site. So if I want to find out the weather in my hometown, I can just launch Alfred, type in weather, type in the location, and boom, we've got the weather for my horrible little hometown, which I have no desire to go back to. Moving on, you also have a calculator function built right into this. So if I just really quickly need to know what is 345 times 76, there I have my answer. Now another handy feature within Alfred is if I now hit the Enter key, okay, you'll see that there's my results. If I hit the Enter key, that number is now copied to my clipboard. So if I'm, let's say in notes, I can hit, oops, sorry, didn't mean to launch maps there, quit out of that. I can now hit paste, command V of course, and there I have that number. And it goes, it does that for more than just the calculator, and I'll show you a couple examples in a little bit. Also it does talk to your dictionary, so if you need to learn either how to spell a word or if you need to know uh, what a particular word means, you can do that simply by typing in the word define or spell. And once again, if I do this, like let's say I need to learn how to spell the word paleontologist, P-A-L-E-O-N-T-O-L-L-O-O-G-I-S-T. There we have the, of course, correct spelling. Now if I hit the enter key, that word is now copied to the clipboard. So now I can simply paste it where whether I'm in a document or an email and I have the correct spelling right there. 
Another favorite feature of mine is the fact that Alfred talks to your contacts as well as the built-in Apple Mail program. So let's say I need to send an email to Fred Flintstone, who happens to be one of my dummy contacts in my teaching computer. I can simply launch Alfred and type in the word email Fred. And there we go. So I hit the enter key, it launches a new email, and away you go. Again, that feature, I think, great for seniors more than anything. Uh, not having to go through the contacts, it's just very, very fast. This is also where you can get into the details of the clipboard history. Um, and I want to show you another feature here. See, it will actually hold on to the different items that you have copied to your clipboard for as long as you tell it. So, for example, I can do 24 hours, 7 days, 1 month, or even 3 months. So, sometimes when I create our newsletters, a lot of times I need to copy and paste information from different places. Uh, possibly an even better example is what I'm when I'm posting our live classes to the website, I'm going back and forth between a pages document, our technology that we use to do the live classes so I can get the link and I'm copying all of these different things and what's great with Alfred is I can access all of them. So let me try to give you a, an example here. Let's go into, let's just go to Wikipedia. Okay, and forgive me this is going to be kind of a cheesy example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this first sentence right here. Okay, I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and I'm going to copy a different sentence. I'm going to copy this one right here. Okay. So now that I've done that, let's close out of Safari. Let's go back into our little notepad here and watch this. I can go into Alfred and type in the word clipboard. Okay. And here is everything that I had just copied. So if I hit this, Boom, it just pasted the first item that I had copied. I'm sorry, that's actually the second item. But now I go back, clip, and here is the other one. Oops, sorry, wrong one. My bad. I believe that is it. There we go. So now I have access to everything that I've copied into my clipboard. This can be really, really handy when you're dealing with complex documents where you have a lot of copying and pasting from multiple sources. So I wanted to show you that. Also, Alfred can talk to the uh, application known as 1Password, which is a password storing uh, utility. I don't really recommend using 1Password only for the reason, I've always said this before, if the CIA is getting hacked by China on a daily basis, I'm pretty sure it's possible for someone to hack 1Password. So that's my only reason for why I don't really recommend doing that. Another really handy feature, again, I tend to immediately think that this would benefit seniors more than anything, is the ability to pull up certain system commands using Alfred. For example, if you want to just tell it to empty the trash, you can type in the word empty trash and boom, it does it. Same thing goes for restarting, shutting down, etc. It really can be like your own little personal assistant. Uh, you can have it eject media. So you can see here there's a couple different options uh, where you can have it eject removable media or locally mounted volumes. Uh, and then uh, get into other things here. Let's just move that back there. Okay. Um, terminal, I don't think many of you are going to be getting into that. Also, I do want to go here into workflow at the very top of Alfred to show you one other little feature. One of the handy things I found is that there are certain things I definitely tend to do more than others. So, for example, one of them might be going to a certain website that you go to every day, whether it's a news website or Facebook. In my particular case, I admit it, it is Facebook. So, for this, you can create a hotkey command, meaning you're only going to tap maybe two keys on your keyboard and it's going to automatically launch your web browser and go to Facebook or for that matter any website. Here's how you create that action. You're going to go down here to the bottom left and tap on the little plus symbol. Go here under templates, go over to web and URLs and you'll see here the final option is open URL with hotkey. Very easy to set this up. Go into the first item you see here, which is determining 
uh, telling it what hotkey you want. So let's say I've already created one, I believe, for Facebook. Maybe I want to go to one of my absolute favorite blogs. If you've never checked these guys out, they are awesome. And appropriately, the name of their website is The Awesomer. It's basically, if you're, if you're a, I was going to say if you're a guy, but it, it doesn't matter. They're just a cool website. So because they're A, maybe I want to have the hotkey be option A. When I hit that, it's going to open their website. Ignore these others here. Just hit save. Go over here to open URL. Let's type in really wonderful website, theawesomer.com. You can tell it what web browser to use. In my case, once again, Chrome. And now that I have that done, let me just do it real quickly. On my keyboard, I'm hitting Option A. We launch Chrome, and here we are on theawesomer.com. Just another really, really handy feature. Uh, very, very minor stuff. You can change the appearance of Alfred. So if you don't like that look right there, uh, you can make it lighter or darker. Or if you have trouble seeing, you can have it be larger. So now if I do it, it'll be a little bit bigger. Um, you can change the colors really to whatever you want. Okay. And uh, that's really about it. I don't think we really need to go here into advanced. I think that uh, uh, the people who need some of those functions can discover them on their own. But I hope you enjoyed this. Alfred is really a tr uh, just a wonderful little app. I hope you enjoy it. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com. If you have been enjoying this video on YouTube, we, of course, really do appreciate it. If you click that little like button at the bottom, every time you click it, it's a little bit like giving us a tip on all of our videos. We appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, and hopefully you'll check out our website. Again, completely free public service, pcclassesonline.com. That's all for today, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.